Well, if that didn't brand me the heretic of the day, this almost certainly will. Let's imagine, for sake of familiarity, a mammal, a cool mammal. Through time, variation and inheritability are at our service and selection proceeds untrammeled upon this creature generation after generation through the thick and thin of environmental hazards and we see as is the case for so many mammals uh, fascinating specializations in uh, fur covering in natural armament in social system and in size a common phenomenon in mammals is increase in size and you end up with a cool creature it's shaggy and colorful it's got horns and tusks and claws or maybe some other kind of interesting uh, locomotory features of its limbs it moves in an interesting way and it groups up and socializes in an interesting way and is cognitive in all kinds of mammalian ways that we empathize with and it's big Let's take a look at the history of mammals, for which we have remarkably good records. And let's take it through a mass extinction, circumstances in which a great deal of the species go extinct, a tremendous amount. Every single mammalian group goes through a bottleneck, and you end up with only a few species left, and, or none at all in some cases. And let's take a look at what kinds of species go extinct in these circumstances. Interestingly enough, the ones that make it through the mass extinction tends to be smaller, very broadly distributed across many different ecological circumstances, boring. Creatures who breed rapidly and who uh, have very general lives from a mammalian standpoint. The creatures who go extinct are the biggest, most colorful, most closely associated with a given ecological way of life, which is to say, in ordinary terms, the most adapted. See my point? Selection of the most showy and dramatic kinds, the one, the sort that captures our attention and makes us celebrate the grandeur of life when we get into that mood is a species assassin. The precise opposite of adapting to survive.